Hey students, Mr. Danahauer here. Uh, today we're going to be learning about watersheds and what they are. And of course we're in our hydrosphere unit and so uh, talking about where we get our water from here in Colorado is a pretty important thing to understand um, because you live here and understanding that piece of uh, just our daily lives is uh, an essential part of what we do. So let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, first of all, in order to understand what a watershed is, we need to do a quick review of the water cycle. I'm not really going to spend much time on this, uh, but just a quick quick thing. Uh, remember, we have processes called uh, reservoirs. Sorry, we have places where we have water stored as reservoirs and processes where, which are like exchanges um, of water. So if it's evaporating or precipitating or flowing, those are all fluxes. Um, remember, what are our uh, top three reservoirs for water? Uh, the ocean, right, is one, and ice is another, and uh, our, our other large one is groundwater. So that's another place where we have uh, quite a bit of water overall. And those are huge compared to most of the other places where we have very little water, like in the atmosphere um, or even in lakes and rivers, those kinds of places. Um, and then if we could think about fluxes, what are some big fluxes? Uh, the ocean evaporation is huge. That's our biggest one. And then ocean precipitation the second, and then land precipitation is also pretty high. And so uh, obviously evaporation from the ocean and then precipitation onto land and ocean are very high in terms of flux. So just a quick review. It's good to remember those concepts. And uh, as I said before, I don't really, I'm not asking you to memorize any of these numbers. I just want you to be able to tell me where does water stay a long time? Where do we have large amounts of water? Where do we have small amounts of water? Okay. All right, so what is a watershed? What is this idea? Um, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with a shed, like a storage shed. Uh, instead, it's really uh, the term shed, meaning like which direction is water shed, uh, like, like a verb, shed in a certain direction or moving in a certain direction. Um, so let's define it. You should have a, your two-page packet that's been given to you. Um, this is also on Google Classroom if you need it. So a watershed is really... Um, uh, more of like a definition of, or is more of where the direction of water is moving. Um, and it's a watershed carries the water, right? And it carries it from the sky to the land after a precipitation event. Um, really, this is like a basin landform, or you think water always flows downhill, right? So uh, an area where water is all kind of flowing to one general direction, maybe downhill towards a stream or a lake, uh, that's going to be defined as a watershed. So go ahead and jot this down, a basin-like landform defined by high points and ridge lines that descend into lower elevations and stream valleys. If you need to pause the video for a second to write that down, go ahead. Um, obviously, we, we have a pretty good understanding if you just think about where we live. We have lots of ridges, you know, mountain uh, peaks or even just the foothills. And we have lots of valleys. We have a lot of unique topography in Colorado. So it's easy for us to kind of think about which direction is water going to flow. And then by understanding that, define what a watershed actually is. I'll show you a picture in just a second. Um, a tributary <clears throat> is, um, if you think about contributing, a tributary is contributing. It's a water uh, source, so a river or a stream that's flowing into a larger river or, or lake, um, something like that. Um, so, you know, rivers always start out really small and they grow larger and larger as more and more tributaries flow into them. And we'll talk more, we'll understand that more as we go forward. So if you want to write that definition down real quick, go ahead. All right, so to give you an idea of what a watershed is, you can see here, this is kind of a cutaway um, here. And this is just showing you the definition or an area that's defined as being a certain watershed. And you can see it's defined by this ridge line because anytime water falls from precipitation or snow melts or whatever, and it's on this side of the line, it's on the side that was kind of toward us, it's going to flow down this slope. Water flows downhill. Even the water that percolates or infiltrates underground to become groundwater is also going to flow uh, downhill based on the lay of the land and mostly based on the rock layers underneath that are probably sort of angled that way as well. Um, so all of this area is one watershed. And we typically call, like name a watershed based on the major river that that 
water is eventually ending up in. And we can define a watershed by just looking at a very small area, like our watershed we'll talk about in just a second for the Poudre River, or we could define a massive area as a watershed. It really just depends on what we want to focus on and what we care about. Um, so if we're studying maybe fish populations and horse tooth reservoir uh, and the health of that ecosystem, we might just want to consider the Poudre River watershed and the water that comes to horse tooth. But if we wanted to consider like the output of the Mississippi River Delta, um, now we're going to have to look at a much larger uh, you know, area because the Mississippi River watershed in, in itself is gigantic. It covers a huge amount of the United States. Okay. All right, so that's what a tributary and a watershed are. Now, what watershed do we live in? I already mentioned it. Here's a, here's a quick map on the slideshow to show you. This uh, is the Poudre River watershed. It's defined in this lighter blue and the purple here. And you can see Horsetooth Reservoir is in our watershed. Just to the south of us, we could define uh, um, the Big Thompson watershed as a separate watershed if we're just talking about our local watersheds. Both the Poudre River and the Big Thompson River flow into the South Platte River. And so really, um, the Poudre River watershed and the Big Thompson watershed are a part of the South Platte River watershed. So you can see, what area do I want to be talking about here, defining like a bigger or smaller area? And then we're going to use the river that those that tr that um, is the main river. Uh, of that area to define that particular watershed. You can see from our map, uh, the Poudre River, you guys have maybe walked along the trail, been you know crossed over it many times on bridges going through town, and that flows um, out towards Greeley, and it meets up with the South Platte, Platte River. Um, I believe it's in Kersey, if I'm not mistaken, and the Big Thompson flows in and meets the South Platte here. So uh, along there, we've got some water treatment facilities um, in order to treat the water and make it drinkable. And all of our drinkable water, the majority of it comes from horse tooth reservoir. All right, I'm talking too much. Uh, what tributary does our watershed feed into? Um, the And that's the, the South Platte. Okay, so uh, the Poudre River and the Big Thompson River are both tributaries of the South Platte River. Uh, and then the main source of water, so think about this really quick, where does the majority of the water come from that it ends up in the Poudre River watershed, the Big Thompson watershed, and if you're thinking of melting snow, you're correct. It doesn't come from rain, we don't get very much rain, but up in the higher elevations we get more snow, that snow melts about this time of year in the springtime, and uh, that's going to contribute water to the watershed, to the Poudre River, Big Thompson watershed, really all the watersheds in Colorado. Um, their main source of water is from snow melt. All right, good. So you should have all of the answers for the first part of this. Now let's go ahead and talk about what are the major watersheds. Um, actually, before we do that, I'd like you to take a second, pause this video, and watch the uh, YouTube video that's linked on, um, on here on the slideshow so the sub can change that over for you guys. And I'd like you just to to see a little bit about the whole system that's in place for the Poudre River um, watershed and a little bit more how it works. So go ahead and pause, switch over to this video. When this one's over, go ahead and switch back to the one that you're on right now, okay. All right, so when I take a second and define, there's four major watersheds that we wanna look at. Um, this would be a good time to pause the video and I want you to get your map that looks like this, okay? And uh, then you're going to want to get some colored pencils. And you're going to want at least four colors because we have four major watersheds in the state of Colorado. We could define uh, hundreds of watersheds, but we're going to talk about the four main watersheds, the big rivers. Uh, and that, that'll be, so we need four colors for that. So take a second. Colored pencils are in the side cabinet under um, on the bottom shelf there so we can get out a few colors. Take a couple minutes to get everybody colored pencils. You definitely need colors for this. All right, so stop, get those, and then come back to the video. Okay, so now um, in order to help us define, it's a little hard to, to define it from here. So the first thing we're actually going to draw is the major division line that goes through the state of Colorado uh, that divides the east slope and the west slope. 
And when we say east and west slope, what we're really talking about is east of the continental divide and west of the continental divide. You can see on your packet and then on my slide here, this red line is the continental divide that goes through the Rocky Mountains. And the continental divide, some people think the continental divide is the highest point, um, you know, the highest mountains and stuff. And that's not actually true. The continental divide is simply dividing the two watersheds. So basically, um, the way it's defined is everything that falls on the east side of the continental divide flows into um, the eastern half of the state, into the eastern watersheds, and all of that water ends up typically in the um, in the Atlantic Ocean, okay, Gulf of Mexico. Everything on the west slope, which is on the west side, any water that falls on that side is going to flow towards um, the Pacific Ocean. And it's going to end up in the Gulf of California, which is over by the Baja Peninsula in Mexico, and it's going to end up eventually in the Pacific Ocean. So the continental divide is not the highest point. It's simply the point where we know where the water is going to go to either the east or the west. I want you to take a second and try to draw the continental divide um, with like a dark, uh, you know, regular pencil or something along here. It can be a little tricky. I'm actually going to go back to this slide and walk you through it on this one. If you find the North Platte River, and just go to a little bit to the west. So this side's west over here, if you're not sure. This is east over here. All right. So find that North Platte and get your starting point. And we're going to kind of follow the North Platte River. The North Platte actually starts in Colorado, goes up into Wyoming, and then comes back into the, um, and hits the, the Platte River later um, in Nebraska. So here we've got, um, we're going to cross through where, where you see Lake Granby, just to the north of that, we're going to cross the Continental Divide because it goes through the mountains there. Very beautiful area if you've ever hiked around Adams Falls. And the Continental Divide is then going to come down. And uh, if you see where it says Blue River, the Continental Divide is going to go between Blue River and Clear Creek right here, which uh, that's not very apparent on your copy. So just come to the east of the Blue River. If you don't get this exactly right, it's not a big deal. But we do want to see which big rivers are coming from where and which side they're on. Then you can see here um, this cuts kind of to the west. The Continental Divide cuts kind of to the west and cuts off the Arkansas River, the South Platte River, and the Blue River right here. Kind of cuts through here. And then comes to the west, to this side of the Arkansas River, going through Chafee County. Now when we get down to the San Juans here, um, it does a big swing way to the west. And you can just follow these other, if you see where it says Blue Mesa Reservoir and the rivers that come off to the south of that, just follow those, that, where those start. Those are called the headwaters. And here we get to the Rio Grande. Okay, Rio Grande, that's here. So we want to curve around that and follow it back and then go back down south here. So again, if you don't get this exactly right, it's not a huge deal. I'm not going to ask you on a test to draw exactly where the continental divide is, but this is helpful in understanding where our headwaters are of our different rivers and how our watersheds are divided up. Okay, okay now that you've got that defined, I want to show you the four major watersheds. Let's do the first one. The first one and largest one is the Colorado River watershed. So everything in the west slope over here, right? Um, the Mancos River, the San Miguel, the Uncompadre, um, the Blue, okay, up here, uh, all of this water, the Yampa, all of it eventually makes it to the Colorado River. Colorado River headwaters are up on Trail Ridge Road. Maybe you've actually been to them. You've crossed up over um, the pass and come into the valley, and there's a really pretty lake, and right there is where the headwaters of Colorado are. And that eventually, you know, of course, gets larger as more tributaries are flowing into it. Um, so basically, all of this water eventually ends up in the Colorado River, not in Colorado, but in other states like Utah uh, and whatnot. And so all of this side, we're going to shade that in, or you can color the rivers like I did here. Pick a color and shade in the whole Colorado River watershed. Don't shade it real dark, just a nice light color. Um, so that you can see where that watershed boundary is. 
and then you should label this one the Colorado River watershed. So pause for a second, a couple minutes, and do that, and then come back, and we'll talk about the next one. So the next watershed we'll talk about is our watershed. And so you can see that on the east slope, which is the eastern half over here of the, of the state pretty much, uh, we have three major watersheds. To the north, we have the Platte River watershed. In the center of the state is the Arkansas River watershed. And in the southern part is the Rio Grande. So we'll start to the north and we'll work our way south. Right along here, if you see where I'm tracing here, okay, there's a whole bunch of rivers that seem to be starting in here. That tells us there's probably a ridge there and they're flowing different directions. Like these are all flowing to the north. These are all flowing towards the south. That's because there's a ridge here called the Palmer Divide. That is an um, elevated area in our state. Um, oftentimes, people in that area get a lot more snow and weather events going on. And so this is just kind of south of Denver. So Castle Rock is kind of in this area. This is Douglas County. And this is our Palmer Divide that divides um, kind of between Denver and Colorado Springs. So that's a dividing line. And if we come to the... Um, if we see here where the, the, continental, the continental divide is, follow the South Platte just down to the south, and then follow the line that go, that, that where all these rivers are starting, kind of draw it here. That, everything to the north of that is going to flow into the, to the Platte River at some point. So that's going to be our Platte River watershed. All of the tributaries flow into the Platte River. Okay. Pause for a second so you can color that in a different color and label it Platte River. If you're labeling just like on top of all of that with a larger letters, you can. If you want to make a little key off to the side with your colors, that's great too. Next one we'll go to is the Arkansas River watershed. Great for whitewater rafting if you've ever had the chance. Starts up near Buena Vista area. Okay, kind of comes down through here. And you can see all the rivers that I've got shaded in yellow here. Um, including the ones down to the south here, all of this is the Arkansas River watershed. So pick another color and shade in the Arkansas River watershed and then identify that on your map. And the last one's the Rio Grande. So you can see here, we have the Rio Grande, the headwaters are in Colorado, but then it flows south um, into you know, our neighboring states, of course. And so just these few rivers in here, um, shade that in and that's your Rio Grande watershed. Take a second to do that, and then we'll move on. Okay, um, let's go back to our sheet. Now that you have an idea of where the major watersheds are, let's go back to um, the first page of our packet. And on number question number six asks, which of the four major watersheds appear to cover the largest area in Colorado? And we already said the largest one is going to be the Colorado River watershed because it's the whole western half of the state, really. Okay, And I'll just let you guys know um for various reasons um mainly the the rain shadow effect which we'll talk about in the future uh this half of the state gets a lot of precipitation in the form of snow if you think about where all of our great ski resorts are at they're along you know this um along here along the continental divide and a lot of that snow falls on the west side due to the rain shadow and so we get way more water that falls precip in the Colorado River watershed. Question number seven, what city has the largest population in Colorado? If you're thinking Denver, you're correct. So if you find Denver, it's going to be down in here. Okay, Cherry Creek. Denver's in this area here. Is it labeled on the map? Yeah, it's right here. There it is. Okay, it's a highlighted here. That might be a good thing to mark. And then if you want to come up here, um, and also mark, <clears throat> you could mark uh, Fort Collins as well. It'd be good stuff to mark. But uh, on, on this, you can see Denver is the uh, has the highest population. And it asks then which of the four major watersheds is that city in. You can tell that it's in the Platte River watershed. And if you've been to Denver, you probably see or you know that the South Platte River flows directly through the city, which is part of the reason the streets are so messed up down there. Um, they're not in a nice grid pattern because they follow the South Platte, which makes them all messed up. So anyway, um, that river runs through there, eventually flows into the Platte River, which joins with the North Platte up in Nebraska. Okay. All right. 
Um, now let's go ahead and <clears throat> let's see here. Let's talk about now, now that we understand the big picture of our state a little bit more, like where the water's at, let's talk about specifically our watershed. Um, what you need to know, a couple of important things. 80% of the population lives on the front range. That's then the east slope. So that's in, right, these three watersheds, 80% of the population roughly lives in that area. So only 20% live on the west, west slope. But 80% of the precipitation falls on the other side, on the west slope. And I already mentioned why that is. We'll get into that more later. That presents a problem. What's the problem? All the water is where there's less people. All the people are where there is less water. So that brings up the Big Thompson Water Project. How do we supply water to all of the population on the Front Range when we only get a small amount of precipitation? In fact, uh, the, the Front Range of Colorado is considered a high desert. It's almost in the desert range because it receives such little precipitation. It probably doesn't feel like that when you're, uh, you know, shoveling snow, if you have to shovel snow uh, in the wintertime. But that that's true. So how, what do we do about that? How do we get water from one side of the mountains to the other through that continental divide? How do we get it over there? And the answer is the Big Thompson Water Project. So now I want you guys to stop again. And I want you to watch this video. So you can pause the one that you're on right now and watch this video. Um, this will actually be the end because the Big Thompson Water Project is going to, this will tell you about the project. And then you'll go ahead and use um, the infographic. Okay, let's see here. Um, this tells a little bit more about it. But on your packet on the very back, I've put an infographic that says how we get our water. And that's going to help you answer the rest of the questions in the packet. Um, and the, you know, the big picture is there's a bunch of pumps and tunnels that have been drilled, the Alva Adams Tunnel, uh, a bunch of power stations along the way. It's a huge, huge system that's been built. And that's how we get our water. But I want you to dig into the details of it. So use that infographic. There are larger pictures for you to look at because the one I copied is really small. So get the laminated ones that are on the desk up front, or you can also pull it up on Google Classroom and you can zoom in. So either one will work just fine. Um, and that's what you need to do for the rest of this packet to answer the rest of the questions is use the infographic and the video you're about to watch. Okay, so stop the video now. Watch this video and I'm all done for today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day.